The social organisation of many species ranges from solitary living to complex social groups. Reproduction among these social organisations is important to the survival of all living things. Without it, life as we know would come to an end. An animal is considered to uptake a solitary way of life if, except in the case of mating, they never take part in any interaction with conspecifics. On the contrary, it's considered a cooperative group if two or more animals cooperate in order to rear their young, forage for food or defend against predators. For today's topic, we will be discussing the reproduction physiology of solitary animals such as tigers in comparison to the social groups such as lions. Is there a difference and is one a more successful method than the other or are they merely a different way of life? Felids, including both lions and tigers, use their smell and pheromones as a key tool to identify other members of the same pride, define territory, create familiarity, and announce sexual readiness. There has been a lot of evidence that suggests scent marking in both solitary and social groups has evolved to meet, in particular, one specific purpose, to communicate with conspecifics for reproduction. Otherwise, the energy loss, including discarding a large amount of lipids that are metabolically costly, would have been selected against through the evolutionary timescale. In solitary animals such as the tiger, the female leaves her pheromones sent by spray marking, scratching trees and rubbing against bushes. She spray marks very frequently during the onset of the estrus stage. They use this form of communication to communicate territorial ranges, gender and whether or not they are ready to reproduce. In all large felids, this is achieved through the urinary bladder, paws, neck and head. In social species such as the lion, they very rarely spray mark and generally only do during the estrus period. There are substantial differences in the marking of the tiger and the lion. Frequency of marking occurs more in the tiger, while the marking duration occurs more in the lion. The tiger also displays seasonal variation in marking patterns, whereas the lion does not. The gestation period of lions generally lasts between 100 to 110 days with a litter size of approximately 1 to 6 cubs. Lions reach sexual maturity at approximately 4 years old and if a male will be forced out of the pride so there are no altercations for dominance with the already present alpha male. Male lions have sharp serrated penile spines that cause the females great distress during mating, but also help to stimulate ovulation. Penile barbs are also present in tigers, as with all true felines. The tiger gestation period is in a similar range to the lions, lasting 103 days, and they will usually litter between two to four cubs. They will stay in their mother's care for up to two years before moving on and finding their own territory. Tigers reach sexual maturity at three to four years of age, which in some circumstances are earlier than lions. Male tigers will kill cubs if they're not his own. This happens so the female is forced back into estrus so the male can pass on his own genes instead. The lion mating system is polygynous. This is where the male has an exclusive relationship with two or more females and tends to be associated with one male and multiple female group compositions. Tigers are of slight variation. This is called polygynandry. This is a mating system in which both the female and the male tigers have several mating partners during a breeding season. Female lions tend to have cubs every two years which is more common than tigers who only give birth every three to four years, depending on the length of dependence on her previous cubs. If a female lion's cubs are killed, she will come into estrus early and have more cubs. Female lions are the main carers for their young and will not only look after their own offspring, but will also nurse the young of female relatives in the pride if litters are born close together. This creates a low cub mortality whereas a mother tiger caring for cubs needs to increase her killing rate by 50% in order to get enough nutrition for herself and her cubs. While most lion cubs stay within their pride, young tigers face numerous dangers when they disperse from their mother's home range. Research suggests a mere 50% survival rate for young tiger cubs. 
Lions and tigers have both evolved and adapted successfully to their environments and their group or social living situations. But which one is more successful? Potentially only time will tell.